Hey Pisces, this is Michael with your August 2022 reading. I hope that this finds you well. I'm sending you lots of blessings your way. I know this month is off to a rocky start for a lot of people. We definitely ended off July and started off the month with some really intense stuff, astrologically speaking. For those of you who don't know, we have Uranus forming a conjunction with the North Node, an aspect that only happens once every 15 years in the sign of Taurus. Now, for those of you who don't know what the North Node is, this is basically one of the points where the eclipses are occurring, and they travel through the zodiac about every um, 18 months. So we do have a very interesting sort of energy here. Um, I, I do feel like with this sort of seismic activity, because this is all occurring in the Earth sign Taurus, there is a lot that is shifting, and it feels very uncomfortable for a lot of people. But there's also a lot that's being catalyzed. There's a lot that's actually kind of falling into place if we can move with these currents, if we can allow ourselves to come back into alignment. And honestly, for you, Pisces, I, I already have some cards here on the table. We have the Magician that actually came out first. And this is very interesting because the Magician represents Mercury, and we have Mercury entering your opposite sign, Virgo, on August 4th. And Mercury represents the conscious mind, it represents manifestation as the magician and putting things together. And I feel like a lot of you have been trying to manifest a specific outcome, specifically in your daily life. So this could be involving home or work, uh, anything that is material perhaps, but it feels like there has been some sort of block or you, you've been in the process of manifesting something and there's been some sort of delay with the Four of Swords. And the message that I'm actually very strongly getting for you is the Eight of Cups as kind of this need to retreat. If you've been trying to force something to happen, Pisces, if you've been trying to make things really just, uh, you know, happen already, it's like the, the more you are pushing, the more resistant you are to the thing you are trying to create or the outcome that you are trying to line up with. And so I really want you to take some time this month to kind of peel back and to refocus your energy. A lot of what is happening, astrologically speaking, we're, we're focusing a lot on your routines and your habits. And this is really kind of contrasting with Saturn in the sign of Aquarius because we are in Leo season. Leo represents your daily grind, your, your routine, your health, your wellness. And Aquarius represents your subconscious. It represents bad habits, so to speak, but it also represents intuition and dreams and spirituality. And so what's really interesting this month, we ended off cancer season in a very intense energy <laughs> uh, because we had Pluto being directly activated by the end of cancer season with all the planets moving out of cancer and into Leo. And we have something kind of similar where now we have all the planets in Leo sort of acting against Saturn in Aquarius. And Saturn has been in Aquarius since the start of 2020, right after the beginning of the pandemic. And so there's a lot that's really coming up here thematically for people where there's sort of this review of the last two years. How far have you come? Have you learned these lessons that have been presented to you? Is there still some review? Are there still some things you are learning? Saturn is almost out of the sign of Aquarius and it will actually be entering into your sign in the beginning of next year. And there will definitely be plenty of energy to work towards things, to make things happen. Saturn is about discipline, it's about focus. There can be lessons involved, but these lessons and hardships are ultimately refining things. And there has been just this, this kind of subconscious pressure on you. And I feel like spiritually, you need to take a time out this month. You need to make time to replenish yourself, to rest, to sleep, to meditate with the Four of Swords. Some of you may need to walk away from situations or relationships that aren't working for you. But to be completely honest with you, Pisces, this feels like you are 
just temporarily removing yourself from a situation. And I do have the Ace of Swords at the bottom of the deck here as well. And if you're waiting for some sort of clarity, if you're waiting for some sort of answer or message, especially regarding to something you've been working on, it will come. But it's almost like the, the harder you're trying to make something happen, the more resistance and tension you feel in your body. This is kind of a natural barometer for how aligned your energy is towards the thing you're trying to manifest or create. We have the earthworm. Yeah, you're working very hard. You're tending to soil here. You're trying to create something new and you might be feeling a little self-conscious about your life right now. You might be feeling like you should be further along or that the people around you are more skilled. There's kind of this feeling of being vulnerable, actually. But there is fertile soil with the earthworm. And it's not that the seeds you've planted aren't going to root. They aren't going to sprout. They will. They are going to sprout. It's just taken more time. And there's this self-consciousness that's coming up for you. <laughs> of course. Wow, okay. Beautiful stuff, actually. Um, I'm feeling like with this full moon in Aquarius on the 11th, this could be when all of these sort of heavy energies, these heavy spiritual lessons that we've been talking about, maybe some bad habits that need to change, could really be at a breaking point with the Ten of Wands. And the funny thing about the Ten of Wands, too, you might be successful with something, you might have achieved something, but it's almost like now there's even more work to do with this achievement. The sort of positive thing with the Ten of Wands, though, that I don't hear a lot of people talk about, it's like, that's kind of a part of growth or enterprise. When you have grown something to such a degree where you can no longer handle things and you need to delegate, <laughs> that's actually a sign of growth and that allows for even more growth. So maybe there is something that is coming to fruition by the end of this month, but it's gonna require you to delegate your energy or your responsibilities onto other people. And I do feel like there is potentially someone here to help you with the Two of Cups or even a new relationship with the Ace of Cups. I, I love Virgo season for you because that does represent relationships. And with Mercury entering Virgo, right at the start of this month, there might be communication with someone. You might be opening up more. Um, then we have the Sun entering Virgo on the 22nd. That's when Virgo season begins. And then finally, we have a new moon in Virgo on the 27th. So this new moon, the Sun, Mercury could all be bringing this beautiful energy, these new beginnings in your relationships that feel really, really great. Um, this could be deepening an existing connection. This could be um, a new relationship, perhaps. I feel like it's also possible that this, this hard work or this hard energy isn't necessarily even in your own life, but in your partner's life or in someone's life that you are connecting with very strongly. Um, that's actually quite possible. And I, I feel like there's something about you needing to take some time for yourself now because all of a sudden there's going to be a lot of things that fall into your lap. And there's going to be a lot of things to do. There's going to be a lot of responsibilities. So take the first part of this month to recharge, to recollect yourself, or to gather yourself, to connect spiritually. There's a couple of other things happening this month with your ruling planet Neptune, or one of your ruling planets, Neptune, that's also very interesting to me. Um, we have Venus in Cancer forming a trine with Neptune in your sign on the 7th. And this is really interesting because this could be bringing about 
Um, again, like new sorts of relationships, new potential, new passion, new creativity. You could be reconnecting to a passion as well. Maybe that's the thing you are committing to with the Two of Cups. Um, but there is this really beautiful energy. It's very dreamy. I feel like a lot of you, if you have creative aspirations, um, it's like you're going to have some sort of new idea or inspiration that comes to you this month. And that might be happening around that time. Um, we do also have Mars and Taurus forming a sextile with Neptune and Pisces. Again, this is going to be on the 11th, the same day as the full moon in Aquarius. And Mars and Taurus is really helping you be actionable with your dreams. And um, also have conversations, work things out, plan things out. That's going to be a good day to plan and maybe put plans into motion, especially if they are creative or spiritual in nature. And then finally, there is this really kind of hypersensitive moment as well. Maybe that's why you're going to be taking some time or you need to take some time for yourself. I also kind of got the hypersensitivity with the earthworm. That could be happening around the 21st when Mercury in Virgo is forming an opposition with Neptune in Pisces. There could be some sort of confusion. There could be some sort of hypersensitivity. It might be hard for you to figure out what's your own energy and what's someone else's energy, what you are feeling or what you are projecting onto somebody else or maybe vice versa. There's some sort of cross wire there. But overall, this energy is really, really beautiful. And I do feel like there is this sense of epiphany that's going to be happening for you this month, especially when Uranus goes retrograde in the sign of Taurus on the 24th. When Uranus goes retrograde, that can almost be this, again, sort of eureka moment, this aha, this epiphany. And I, I feel like these revelations are happening in your conscious mind. So it, it's, it's really helping you get a new idea or see things clearly or have a conversation that just blows you open in the best possible way. Um, and I think that's kind of a nice way to sort of reel back from all the intense energy at the beginning of August and the end of July, really. Um, yeah, there, there's some big truth that's coming with the black egg. And you might be uncovering a truth in yourself, or someone might be revealing a truth to you. I feel like communication is very, very important, especially if it feels vulnerable. With the Two of Cups, there is this need for you to be open. And if there's a lot of pressure, it's almost like you need to open up to somebody else to release this pressure a little bit more. What else do we have for Pisces? Is there any other messages for Pisces? Wow, cosmic egg, crown chakra. Yeah, something is really blowing your mind, quite literally. And it's interesting how we have two egg cards here. The black egg represents the throat chakra. The cosmic egg represents the crown chakra. I feel like some of you are literally going on a retreat or kind of distancing yourself from the hustle and bustle of daily life and really meditating or connecting spiritually, especially with the Eight of Cups and the Four of Swords. I feel like there's this thing with meditation or, or even going on like a meditation retreat or something like that. That's kind of what this energy reminds me of. And the Page of Cups, yeah, you're very sensitive. And also, th there could be a romantic offer here on the table or, or a deepening of a connection. I keep hearing poetry with this card. There's something about poetry. Maybe connecting with poetry, maybe communicating in poetry. Or someone is, is writing a poem about you or is just very lyrical or poetic in the way they're talking to you or sharing themselves with you. This is all about sharing and being vulnerable and being creative. Is there anything else for Pisces? 
Six of Cups. There's something very healing. Some of you could be re rekindling an old relationship, or not even necessarily rekindling, but just reconnecting with people from the past. This is actually sort of interesting, um, because Mercury is going to enter into Libra at the end of this month, around the 25th. Mercury is actually going to be going retrograde, and it's going to go back into the sign of Virgo either in September or in October. I haven't checked that far ahead yet. Um, either way, when Mercury goes retrograde, especially in your opposite sign, that can sometimes bring back people from the past or just thinking about people from the past or, or healing from things from the past. But actually, when I'm looking at the Six of Cups, it, it almost goes deeper than that. It's like you're healing something from childhood and patterns in your relationships that you have reincarnated throughout your life. There, there could be reconnecting with someone or crossing paths with someone and you're like, oh, wow, I've healed a lot, actually. Um, and there is just a lot of focus on health and healing overall, being in Leo season uh, for a good portion of this month, too. So definitely take care of yourself and don't try to push things right now. Let things sort of flow. Really meditate and get into a more allowing state because it's almost like a finger trap energy. Like the more you're trying to pull or, or get out of something or make something happen, the more stuck you get. And it's when you lean into the discomfort or when you lean into the uncertainty or just like kind of come back to yourself, that's when you release yourself. Is there anything else? Is there anything else? I feel like I need to pull from the Botanical Oracle for you, actually. the medicine for Pisces for the month of August. Blackberry. Adaptation. And I know with this card, I, I believe Blackberry is a very adaptable plant in the sense that it can pretty much grow anywhere. And that's kind of interesting because there was that message of fertility with earthworm. And I do believe that blackberries are one of the plants that can kind of grow along cliff sides and in almost these sort of impossible situations. And even though the energy can feel a bit heavy with the Ten of Wands, there's a lot of responsibility. There's a lot that you have to do. I think you're adapting, you're delegating things more, you're expressing things, and it's helping you work with this energy. Let's read a little more, shall we? And I'm going to kind of skim through here. This book actually goes through like all the herbal properties and folklore of each of these plants. So if you are interested in herbalism, I highly recommend this deck, The Head Witch's Field Guide and Botanical Oracle. Um, let's see. The Latin name of this plant is rubus, for bramble, and ursinus, for bear, it is, as it is frequently found in areas where bears are also found and is, of course, among their staple foods. 
The variant Rubus armenicus, commonly called the Asian blackberry, can be found worldwide in an astounding array of environments. The usually black fruit is not a true berry in the botanical sense of the word, but an aggregate fruit composed of small droplets. It is a widespread and well-known group of more than 375 species, many of which are closely related microspecies native throughout Europe, northwestern Africa, temperate western and central Asia, and North and South America. A blackberry can be distinguished from its relative the raspberry by whether the torus, core, or stem stays with the fruit when picked. Raspberry cores remain on the plant, so the berry will be hollow, as opposed to blackberries, which retain the pulpy one. The oracle property related to this group of plants is adapt, or adaptation. Any gardener, forager, or hiker who has had to contend with the thorny arcs of this bramble can attest to the way to the fact uh, that no matter the terrain, this tenacious plant finds a way to flourish. Though often being thought of as a pest or invasive plant, the blackberry also provides shelter to many animals and food for butterflies, bees, moths, and all sorts of larger creatures, including humans. The blackberry's ability to adapt and flourish in new or even hostile terrain is certainly something we can learn from. Part of its success can be attributed to its thorny canes. The blackberry bramble is nearly impenetrable and never easy to eradicate. If you find yourself in a situation that seems to require that you adapt, even radically, keep in mind that it is sometimes good to have your defenses up while you are in flux. In a time you can flower and offer your gifts to the world, Foraging into new terrain is never easy and may require a great deal of effort and openness to change. Remember that self-care can be one of your most important tools in times of transition and change. So yeah, there is a lot that's changing in your life right now. There's a lot that's in flux. And again, I think a lot of people are experiencing that in the month of August and again, end of July. There's just been this sort of turbulence here. So kind of almost channeling the energy of this plant or connecting with blackberries in some way and this adaptability could really help you and and just being more adaptable allowing yourself to shift and to change i feel like there are these sort of messages or almost downloads is how i want to to refer to them you're you're getting information you're getting clarity but it requires you to kind of go out of your routine and to adapt to new energy. And I do feel like, again, there is something about self-care here too. Um, that feels all really important and resonant. And I'm pretty sure that's everything for you this month, Pisces. I, I hope that this was helpful. Be sure to hit like and subscribe. If this video wasn't super clear or you'd just like greater clarity on something that came up, you are welcome to check out the video for your moon or rising sign. Not all of these messages are going to resonate for everybody, so it really is up to your own intuition and discernment to figure out which video is the one that draws you in, regardless of your zodiac placements, actually. So really just trust your intuition to bring you to the message that calls you in the most. Anyways, Pisces, I am wishing you a very happy and blessed August, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care. Thank you.